welcome Dwayne Wade. Man. Wow. I feel like we at the American Airlines Arena. Yeah, man. This is... Look at this. Man. <laughs> This is all you. Welcome, welcome to the show. Thank, thank you so much for making the time. I mean, I, like everyone wants a piece of Dwayne Wade <laughs> down in Miami. We're so lucky to get you. Let, let's just jump straight into what is a culmination of one of the most prolific sporting careers people have ever seen. This is your final season in the NBA. Is it, is it, is it surreal for you every game you play? <laughs> um, first of all, thank you for... Thanks for having me on the show. What are we no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, you know what? You know, I've been, I've been playing the game of basketball um, since I was five years old. I am now 36. So I've been playing for 31 years. Um, so this is what I've mastered, right? This is what I've been good and great at. Um, so it definitely, it definitely is a little nerve-wracking, you know? You're a little nervous because... I don't know if I'll be great at anything else like I am basketball, right? But, you know, I just decided um, after a long summer, you know, of really thinking about how I wanted to see my career in, um, get an opportunity uh, last year to come back to Miami. Um, I just felt, yeah. <laughs> I, felt the, um, I felt the timing um, was perfect uh, for me. I, I don't want people to think I'm retiring because I can't play no more. I just want people to understand I'm retiring because I'm ready to walk and do something different, not because I can't play the game of basketball. I, um, I came out and watched my, 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 my first Miami Heat game and you were playing and to see the love in the crowd was amazing. But what's also interesting is to see how that love follows you off the court as well. You, you, you are somebody who has had the opportunity to engage in business opportunities beyond just, just basketball. You, you're, you're, you're a mogul now. I mean, you, you're involved in clothing. You, you know, you're involved in your own shoe line. You have ties, you have socks, you have luggage, you have like Dwayne Wade seems like, it doesn't seem like you're gonna be struggling to do anything when you leave. The NBA, what do you enjoy about being in business? Um, I, what, what I enjoy about it is, first of all, you know, just being a young kid from the inner city of Chicago, my dream was to play <laughs> Chateau, okay? My dream was to play in the NBA. And once I got an opportunity to get here, then so many doors opened for me, and I was able to step through those doors and learn different things that I never really thought that I had the passion for or the knowledge for. So I've been able, all these things that I've been a part of, this same stuff I went to school for, you know, this is stuff that I either had, you know, I've learned through traveling or I learned through meeting people um, that, oh, I like that. Oh, let me think about doing that. So all these things that I'm, that I'm doing, I've picked up along the way of, of just living life and, and going places and being open to new things. So I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy being able to use my creativity to have an amazing team behind me to be able to use their create creativity and be able to hopefully give the consumers, give my supporters, give the fans um, you know, something that they love and enjoy as well. So that's all I'm trying to do. Right, and you, you, you're doing it a thousand times over. You have... You have the business, you have the basketball, and a large part of Dwayne Wade has been getting involved in the community. You know, you, you, you've mentioned a few times now, coming from Chicago, growing up in Chicago, you know, as many of us know, we've been on a journey with you as fans where we've gone through the ups and downs of Chicago in your life. You know, losing loved ones to gun violence was a really tough time for many people, I'm sure you the most. Mm -hmm. When you, when you look at that journey and when you, when you look at what you want to do now in both Chicago and Miami, you have a few initiatives that you're working on now. Yeah. What is your dream? What are you trying to implement in the communities to try and help people? Yeah, um, so when I, was a, when I was a little kid, you know, I just remember, you know, always saying to myself, if, if God blessed me with an opportunity to, to, to make it, right? To, to be able to give back to others, I wanna do it, and I wanna do it in a big way. You know, I wanna, I wanna be able to bless communities in a way that's gonna change their lives if I get that opportunity. And once I got the opportunity, I wanted to live right. You know, I wanted, I wanted to do what I said. So, you know, in Chicago first, from my mother's standpoint, I said, you know what, Ma, here's a church. You do your part with the church. Um, I bought my mom a church early on so she can continue to save you lives. Bought your mom a lives. church. I bought my mom a church. That's, all, that, that's a whole nother story, uh, how we got to that point. But I, I ended up at my mom a church, and I said, you do your job to, 
you know, to save lives. You know, my mother is an amazing pastor um, in the city of Chicago. My dad, my dad is into the community. My dad does amazing. That's where I got it from. I watched my dad for so many years um, give back to the community. He had me out there as a kid. Um, even though we didn't have a lot of things we had, we had to give, give away, give to others. If I had two pair of shoes, I only ended up having one because I gave the other pair away. So I kind of had a family that I've watched my whole life kind of make sure they give. And we didn't have a lot. We didn't have a lot at all. But um, what we had was more than what others had. And so we wanted to make sure that we can, you know, we can give to the others. So um, it kind of started from there. Then when I got to college, my college coach always told me, he always said, Duane, too much is given, much is required. Too much is given, much is required. And I didn't know what he meant at the time. And then once I got older, I started understanding what that mean. I, I've been given so much, and a lot is required of me. It's required of me not only to give from my pockets, but to lend my voice, to lend my face, to stand up on this platform and support and talk about. So... All those things. That's something you haven't been afraid of doing. You know, there, there, there are a lot of athletes who've been afraid of lending their voice to causes that they believe in or people that they support. You know, uh, your good friend and basically your brother, LeBron James, is somebody that you've been on a journey with for many years yeah. where you've been speaking about issues. Yeah. Um, we've seen you at, at, at sports ceremonies. We've seen you with the Parkland, kid, for instance, Parkland yeah. kids, for instance. You spent three hours with them the first day they came back to school. Why do you think... Why do you think as, a, as an athlete, as an athlete, why do you think it's so important for you to step out from beyond the game and to engage in ideas that you, you, you believe in? Well, you know, going back to that, we was in Philadelphia when we, when we heard the news um, about what happened. And I didn't know exactly where it was at. And as, immediately, as a parent, I got scared because I have kids in school. And I knew it was what area it was in, but I didn't know which school. So immediately, I'm scared, right? I'm the hardest racing, I'm beating fast, I'm trying to call my kids. And eventually I got on the phone with my kids and I realized that they was okay. But then I knew that other parents out there was hurting the same way that I was hurting, was feeling that same anxiety. So once we got a chance to come back um, to the city, it was just like, hey, can I go to the school? Can I go up there and visit? And I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I just wanna be able to, to bring some sort of light. I had just got back to the city. The, the city of Miami had welcomed me back with open arms uh, when I got traded back. And I wanted to bring some light. So I had an opportunity to go, and I didn't know what to expect. It was real quiet when I got there, but man, when the kids saw me, it just it opened them up. The light in their eyes, the smiles on their faces, that right there was one of the biggest, one of the most important moments in my life of, you know what, this, what basketball has done for me and the platform that I have, this is what it's about. And I got an opportunity to sit down in a room with, with their leaders and talk to them about, hey, what can I do? What can my team do to help support you guys' initiative, what you're trying to do? Um, and it started from, you know what, my voice. Then it went from the support financially and so forth and so on. And we continue to do things. We did exhibits here in Miami and New York and L.A. We continue to support because this is my community. This is our community, and it means a lot to us. As you can tell... The people love you as much as you love them. Welcome to The Daily Show. I appreciate you. What a, what a great time to have you on as well, because I mean, you are an amazing basketball player, but then today you have been in the news for something that happened on the court that got someone thrown off the court. It was a little altercation that you had with a, a Pacers player. I didn't start it though, That's, we have to say that first. Okay, you didn't start, you didn't start the I thing. did not start it. Right. But it gets heated. What was interesting is I haven't seen many fights in basketball that end with one person blowing a kiss at the other person. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you. I will agree. <laughs> but but it, was it really a fight? Or it was more of an altercation? It was an altercation. Right. And, it, and it, you see altercations ending kisses all the time, I'm sure. That is true. See? Thin line between love and hate. Mm. That's what that is. Do you, did you think about the move before you did it? Or was it just in the moment? He was just like, this is, this is If me I say goodbye. it was in the moment, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's, that's not gonna go over well, so I have to say I thought about it. Now, a lot of people were excited about that moment because there are many people who feel like the NBA has become too tame. You know, guys are like, oh, there's no more fighting, there's no more roughness. You know, you hear Shaq talking about that. D Wade was like, oh, this is old school Miami yeah. Pacers again. Do you think the game like enjoys moments like this where we feel like the players are really invested? I think so. I think so. Everybody likes something a little different here and there. Right. And I just feel as though 
I'm that type of player. Like, I, I don't know if I'm the best player. I can't, I can't answer that. I can't tell you that. But I know I'm not putting up with too many things, um, what people want to say. Uh, I think if you just stick to basketball, it yeah. wouldn't happen. But time and time again, some disrespectful stuff happens. You say you're not... You, you say you wouldn't say you don't know if you're the best player. I would say that most people in Miami would say that you are because when you came to the Miami Heat, the team was struggling, I believe, in, like, 10th place, right? And now in the season that you've been there, in the East, they're in second place now. So, All I right. mean, you are... We're doing... I mean... We're doing okay. We, we are. What, what's, what's interesting... What's interesting is that a lot of people were, were shocked by your decision to move from Philly to Miami. They were like, what is Jimmy doing? Philly's got the super team, and now you're moving to a team that doesn't have any proven players on it. Why make that decision? Uh, I mean, for the longest time in this league, I wasn't a proven player. So for me to hear and know the culture and what goes on when you're a part of the Miami Heat organization, it fit me to a T. I'm allowed to be me every single day that I'm in a jersey, every single day that I'm in practice, I get to, to talk the way that I would like to talk, right. act the way I would like to act, and it's okay. And uh, I think we have a great group of guys, young guys mixed with vets, and it clicks, it works. Everybody's so happy that everybody's successful and getting the recognition that they deserve that um, we're, we're going this way. How do, you, how do you work in Miami, though? No, because I've, I've been there. Like, we've been there for The Daily Show, and, like, every day I was just like, I don't want to work. <laughs> it's just sun. It's beach. It's... Like, how do you stay focused in my... Because if, if, if I remember correctly, you wake up at, like, what, 4 a.m.? Yeah. Every I'm up day. early. Not every day now, but in the, in the summertime, every single day. Every single day. And then you were in bed by, like, what, 9 p.m.? Mm, let's say 7. 7 p.m. Yeah. So you're not watching The Daily Show? Ah, oh, man. <laughs> I, I record it and I watch it throughout the day. <laughs> you hear me? No, but, but for real, how have you remained so focused in life? Because you see a lot of young players who get into the league. They, they get a lot of money, a, lo- a lot of money that a lot of people aren't used to. And you took this and you became one of the most disciplined players in the league. How do you think you've maintained that focus? I, I find a, a battle within myself to know if it's because I want to continue to get better. Yeah. Or if I'm so scared to go backwards. And I don't want to go back to being just a kid from Tomball. I love where I'm from, without a doubt. But um, I don't think just a kid from Tomball would be sitting on this show with you. So I I want to continue to get better. Um, And I think that's why I do it. But I get lost. Is it because I do really want to get better? That's interesting. Or is it because I'm scared of of going backwards? I feel like that's that's the theme of your life as well. You're one of those people who not only wants to become better, not only wants to improve the situation of your life, but you do that for people around you. Of course. One thing you'll always hear about Jimmy Butler, no matter who you speak to in the league, people who know you, they go, he has the biggest family you've ever come across. And they don't mean, like, like immediate family. They mean, like, chosen family. You've hired anyone you've met anywhere who is amazing, you know, whether it's, whether it's drivers or, or trainers mm-hmm. or, or people. You just, you just brought people into your little organization and said, hey, let's grow together as people. What, what is it about other human beings that makes you want to improve their lives? I think that uh, somewhere down the line on many different uh, parts of my life, somebody have given me a chance, whether it right. be at junior college, at Marquette, you know, with the Chicago Bulls, now with Miami, that I've come across so many great people and I, I want them to help me be better as I help them be better. And when I say family, it's like we do everything together. When I have to be up at 4 a.m., they have to be up at Oh, wow. Yeah, everybody. Oh, it's wow. It's not a game. Everybody. I don't want to be in your family. Get, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, but that's it. I think uh, everybody loves to work, and yeah. it, it reminds me of, of why I do what I do. I know that if I'm not the best at what I do, I can't continue to make those guys be the best at what they do. You also have an interesting life uh, that many people wouldn't know about. You, you know, it began in an interesting way, but you are a passionate wine collector, and your dream is to just, like, retire on a vineyard. Just, like, go out there and, like, grow and, grapes. And never see me again. <laughs> you may be able to see me again via Skype or whatever, <laughs> whatever they use nowadays. It's just, but... like, gonna be you? Yeah. Just, like, doing your thing? And my family. We're, we're, all, we're all going... And then everyone's together. gonna be picking the grapes? Oh, yeah. Except for me. I'm gonna be... <laughs> I don't work way too hard. I gotta put my feet up and enjoy it. Why wine, though? I don't know. I feel like wine, to me, is a lot like people in, in the sense that it tells a different story um, 
every bottle, every vintage, every year. And um, the more people that I come across and I learn so much about different people in different cultures. Yeah. Wine for me, I mean, you might get a little buzz from it, but that never hurt. Uh, it, it's the best. It tells a story. It does. I know that you uh, you celebrated the birth of your son. Right? Daughter. Your daughter. Daughter. Oh, congratulations. Daughter, thank congratulations. you. Congratulations. Yeah. So I know. So you celebrated you celebrated the, the birth of your daughter, and it was a big moment for you. You didn't even play in the games. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people would still go play. You're like, no, I'm out. You know, Miami Heat will have to play without me. I'm going to be there with my child. Did you have a special bottle of wine for that occasion? <sighs> I Because I know, like, actually. wine collectors have the... Everyone goes, like, there's a wine for every occasion. Was there a wine that you was special enough for you to open for having a child? I was in a hospital, so I didn't really know if you were supposed to be drinking in the <laughs> hospital, you know? So, uh, no, I can't say that there's a, a, a special bottle. It was just... A, it was a special moment. Right. It, it, it really put a lot of things in perspective to think that, you know, it was, I don't know what to, to call it, the next of age player in Miami after the great Dwayne Wade, yada, yada, yada. And I missed my opening night's right, game. Right, right, right. And so I was caught him like, oh man, I really love basketball and I really love my family and I'm about to have a, a daughter and be a father. What do I do? And I called Coach Bo, and he was like, all right, well, we'll see you in a couple days. Go to the hospital. And it made it, it made it easy for me. That is really amazing. I'm excited for what the future is going to bring. I know you guys are playing the paces again, so we'll see where the kiss takes us. <laughs> I know you guys are going to handle it on the court. Thank you so much for being on the show. Appreciate Jimmy it. Butler. Thank you. Dwayne Wade, welcome to the show. Man, thank you. And good to have you here with, like, you know, a book that I... I, I didn't know what to expect when I started reading it, but it feels like a memoir in pictures. It feels like a story of your life and some of your inner monologue thoughts. Like, what inspired this version of the book? It is. It, that's exactly what it is. I didn't, I didn't want to go at it from a standpoint of, like, just words on a, on a paper. I've, I've done that once, uh-huh. and it was great. But, like, this time, sitting down, thinking about um, my responsibility and my role, and I take it very seriously um, as a public figure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just understanding that little Duane's, need something to see. Right. You know, like l- reading something is great, but when they can actually see the image of, the, of, the, of something, of someone, I think that right there is more powerful. So for me, it was important that I show the human side of, you know, what people look at as, as an athlete because they met right, me as an right, athlete. Right, right, okay. But I'm okay. a human, and so I wanted to show a little bit of that. Yeah, it's a beautiful book divided into quarters, you know? Uh, you know, like your life has been this game that you've been playing out. I was a little disappointed because I was like, well, it can't be four quarters because your life's not finished yet. So then the next one's going to be overtime. You realize that, right? Didn't think of that. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't think of writing another book. I, didn't. <laughs> this is gonna, your I life was like, is, this, is, this your, is it. Your life is, do you ever think about that as an athlete? It's like, you know, a lot of the time for athletes and for the public, sometimes your life ends when your career ends. You know, mm. do you ever think about that and, and, and how hard it is to think about your next journey as a human being. I mean, I know, you know, you're a husband, you're a dad, you're a businessman now, but were you ever worried? Was there ever a moment where you were like, man, who is Dwayne Wade without the ball? Who's Dwayne Wade without the hoops? 1,000%. I mean, basketball is what I know, right? From the standpoint of, I've focused my whole life on trying to be great. If you're trying to be great at something, you understand it. It takes all of your, your attention. Mm-hmm. It takes all of your time. And once I got to like my last year, when I was like, all right, I think I'm ready to walk away. I was like, what am I gonna do next? And everybody tells you along the way, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna have so many (laughs) things going on. You're like, how, where? And you know, I took a few few months off, maybe like two to three months. And then I just say, you know what? Uh, Talk with my team and let's say, let's get back to it. Let's just hit the ground running. Let's take meetings and let's just see. Let's see where my interest lies. Because I didn't know, you know, all I knew is I love the game of basketball and I enjoy business. I enjoy making money. Mm -hmm. I enjoy creating things. Mm -hmm. I enjoy designing things. So for me, it was like, let's find what that next step is. So I feel that I'm in my rookie season in life again. I'm in oh, the pregame. Like I'm I in like the pregame that. again. And in, in this in this new this new step, this new walk. If I if I had guessed before reading the book and someone said to me, okay, what are Dwayne Wade's passions? I would have gone, okay, basketball is definitely one of them. Yes. I would have said fashion yes. is definitely one of them. Yes. You know, Dwayne Wade's never been afraid to take a chance. <laughs> um, you know, I would have said wine is one of them. Yes. You know? But one thing I would have never said before reading the book was karaoke. Oh. Listen. You you you're a humble person, but the one thing you have no humility about you you call yourself <laughs> the greatest karaoke singer in the league. Well, you're just like you. When goat. I was in the league, yeah. You're now the goat. I'm out of the league. I'm 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 the goat. Oh, you're just it, the goat. Now. It's not that it's not that I can sing. I cannot sing to save my life. It's that I will get up on stage anywhere to sing karaoke. 
like I'll go to local bars and just jump on stage. That's that's the kind of person I am. Wow. I gotta know the song, but you know what I mean. Yeah, but you you just I do it anywhere. I do it anywhere. Do you have a favorite song? Like what is like Dwayne Wade's? Well, my wife told me I need a new song because I've been doing the same one for about six, seven years. What what's that song? Oh, Montel Jordan. This is how you know. Okay. It's easy. I, I, well, I like my, Montel Jordan because it brings the energy. I hear you. Everybody know the words, even if right. you don't know the words, right. you know some of the right. words. And so it's kind of crowd participation. <laughs> and I don't have to sing. I can deep voice it. So, but yeah, I love it, man. I love it. I, I did like the human side of um, your story with LeBron. You know, I wasn't in, I wasn't in the U.S. When, when the whole move to Miami happened. I wasn't yeah. in the U.S. for that chaos. What do you think was the biggest thing that people missed from LeBron coming to Miami? You know, you, you, you share a few thoughts in the book that I really enjoyed. You know, the conversation you had, what were you trying to, you were try, you were trying to achieve. What do you think people missed in that story? What do you think that, you know, people just didn't understand about that move and the big three? Well, I mean, I'm sure it's a lot that, that people didn't, underst you know, didn't understand. I mean, as, as athletes, you know, when you're, you're touted as one of the, the, the goods and the greats mm -hmm. in the game, they say these are the things you have to accomplish. You have to get rings, you have to get MVP, like it's all these things. And so you can't knock someone for, for listening to that and going out and making sure that you put the best team around you right. to win. Mm -hmm. And so I think at that time, you know, I, was kind of, I had won a championship at 24. I've been losing, 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 losing. I was tired of that. LeBron, you know, for seven years, has, you know, he's got, he got close ones, but he was ready to like get over that hump. Right. Um, Chris Boss was an emerging star in Toronto um, and he was ready to get a little bit more light, a little bit more attention. So I just feel like, man, just to be young and, and to decide as young men that we want to do this mm -hmm. as friends, um, and we understood at that moment that we were shifting the culture of what the NBA was yeah, at that it's, moment. Yeah, it has, it will never be the same. Yeah, I mean, you, it, you know, player empowerment, right. that's what that move was about. Your life has been one that is filled with both tragedy and triumph. I, I, I can't help wondering if that's why you've been as dedicated to your family a, a, as you have been. You know, it feels like Dwayne Wade has gone like, I want to win championships on the court, but I want to win championships at home as well. And, you know, I see that, you know, with, for instance, your son, Zaire, who's playing in the game now. Yeah. I've seen your face light up when you watch <laughs> him and when you play against him. And I've also seen, like, the journey that you've been on with your daughter and just, like, talking through the challenges of having a child who's trans and learning about it. And I want to know a little bit more about that. Everyone thinks the journey to understanding trans people and the conversation happens overnight. It wasn't overnight for you, no. and you had to learn. If you were to talk to another parent out there, or somebody who just goes like, Dwayne, I, this is just, I don't get, this is wrong, this is, I, I don't get it. What helped you to begin to understand so that you could be the best parent to her? Well, I think when, when things happen personally to you, when you have a personal connection to something or someone, um, you, you take it a little bit more serious. And, but when it happens to you, you have to, you have to look it in the face. You have to, you know, write on. Like my daughter looking at me across the table. I, I have to, I, I, this is something I need to deal with, right? In the sense of, I don't know everything, you know? And, and as a parent, you want to make sure that when your kids come to you, you have answers. Mm. You know what I mean? You have the right words, you have the right, you know, support. Uh, whatever it is, you have the right motivation. And so at that moment, I had no answers. The only answer that I knew and that I had that this is my child, I love him and I hate the pain that my child is in. Wow. Right? You know, seeing, seeing the pain of, you know, not being able to feel, feel, you know, confident and comfortable in who you are. Right. You know, that's not, you don't want to see no one live like that, no one you love. And so immediately when it's the hug and the embrace and you see the, just the light, like I seek Zaya's light. And for me to, to, to be in a place where I'm not trying to dim her light, I'm trying to move out the way and let her get all the light. <laughs> um, I just see a, a, a beautiful, you know, blossoming 14 year old girl who's, you know, trying to find, you know, trying to pass her, her, her test at school just like everybody else. Yeah, She's trying to yeah. find friends at a new, at, you know, this year going back to school like everyone else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my wife and I, you know, our whole role and our whole job, and we understand this, is, you know, to provide, to protect, to love, um, to facilitate, you know, we have all these rules. It's, it's not to, 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 to own. It's not to say you're going to be this and you're going to do that. Right. It's to find out who they are. It's to find out what their likes and, you know, and, and what are their dislikes and try to help them, you know, through life, you know. Be the best they can find be. Find themselves. It's not about us. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not about us. That's hard to accept as a parent, man. Yeah. But you're doing it. Dwayne mm -hmm. Wade, thank you again for joining me on the show. Congratulations. This is, this is a really fantastic um, coffee table book slash memoir-ish vibe. Uh, <laughs> and I'm excited to see 
what uh, overtime is going to bring, man. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you Madhu. Well.